Bioma claims to be a symbiotic supplement combining a pre, pro, and postbiotic. But what do these terms mean? And is this probiotic really useful for weight loss? While some probiotics can support weight management, any benefits are typically subtle and don't produce immediate noticeable results, like certain medications or major dietary changes. Instead, certain probiotic strains may gradually influence how the body processes nutrients, potentially lowering the risk of obesity over time, but not directly causing weight loss. For instance, research has linked certain probiotics to health effects like reduced inflammation, and improved food metabolism, both of which are indirectly related to weight control. These changes generally occur behind the scenes, and the impacts may take months or even years to make a significant difference. So with this in mind, have the probiotics in Bioma been shown to provide real weight loss benefits? By the way, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated as I review more supplements like this one. First, let's go over Bifidobacterium lactis. Studies show that a specific strain called CECT8145 might slightly reduce waist circumference in women when taken for three months. However, this effect is minimal and doesn't seem to translate into any weight loss. In obese adults, taking Bifidobacterium lactis for six months didn't result in weight or fat reduction when compared to a placebo. Similarly, young healthy participants participants taking the probiotic for six weeks also saw no change in body weight or fat levels compared to placebo. Even in a modified heat inactivated form, Bifidobacterium lactis showed no significant difference in weight or body fat reduction compared to eating regular seafood sticks. That said, Bifidobacterium lactis has shown some potential benefits for digestive health, particularly in easing constipation and managing symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. For Bifidobacterium longum, there isn't strong human research showing that it has any significant effects on metabolism, much less on weight loss. For digestive health, Bifidobacterium longum has been studied for its potential benefits in managing constipation and IBS, but the results are mixed and somewhat unclear. Now let's go over Bifidobacterium brev. In studies involving children with obesity, taking it daily for 8 weeks alongside diet and exercise slightly improved insulin sensitivity, but it didn't lead to any change in body mass index compared to diet and exercise alone. However, in adults, a specific strain called Bifidobacterium brev B3 did show a slight reduction in total body fat when taken daily for 12 weeks. As for digestive health, Bifidobacterium brev has also been researched for its effects on constipation and IBS, but the findings have been mixed. Now that we've covered the probiotics and bioma, let's talk about the prebiotics and postbiotics. What are they and do they offer any additional benefits? Postbiotics are a bit tricky to define, partly because there's still no universally accepted definition for them. According to the International Scientific Association for Probiotics and Prebiotics, or ISAPP, an organization that sets guidelines for these terms, postbiotics are essentially preparations of inactive microorganisms or parts of these microorganisms along with any beneficial byproducts they might produce. In simpler terms, they're made from dead probiotic bacteria or fragments of these bacteria. Bioma claims that its ingredient, tributyrin, is a postbiotic. Tributyrin is an organic compound naturally found in butter, but it's not derived from dead probiotic bacteria. In fact, the ISAPP specifically states that purified organic acids like tributyrin don't actually qualify as postbiotics by their standards. So by the ISAPP's definition, bioma doesn't include a true postbiotic. That said, tributyrin itself is a short chain fatty acid that can be produced in the gut when bacteria ferment fiber. Some studies on cells suggest it may help maintain the gut barrier and have anti-inflammatory effects, but so far there's no evidence from human studies showing tributyrin can improve digestive health. 
prebiotics are types of fiber that act as food for the beneficial bacteria in your gut, helping them thrive. The prebiotic in bioma is sourced from corn and functions similarly to other well-known prebiotics like inulin and fructooligosaccharides. Foods like chia seeds and flax seeds are also excellent sources of prebiotics. Including a prebiotic in a probiotic supplement might theoretically give the probiotics an extra boost by providing with nutrients right away. However, it's usually not necessary. When you take probiotics with a meal, the fiber from your food acts as a natural prebiotic, feeding those good bacteria. Some believe that adding prebiotics to a probiotic supplement helps if you're taking it on an empty stomach. But given that food stays in your digestive system for quite a while, there's typically enough leftover food for probiotics to consume unless you're fasting. So while prebiotics from dietary fiber is indeed good for gut health, adding a small amount to a supplement doesn't offer significant additional benefits. So Bioma does contain some probiotic strains that have mixed evidence for improving digestive health, particularly for those dealing with constipation, IBS, and possibly even ulcerative colitis. There's also some weaker evidence suggesting it might offer a slight benefit in reducing the risk of common colds or the flu. However, Bioma is unlikely to cause any weight loss. While certain strains in Bioma like Bifidobacterium lactis and Bifidobacterium brev can be part of a healthy weight management plan, Plan, they're not likely to affect your weight on their own. Studies suggest that only specific strains of these probiotics, such as CECT8145 and B3, show any potential benefits, and generic versions of these strains, like those in Bioma, likely don't have the same effects. If you're interested, there are other probiotics, such as Lactobacillus gesseri, that may have stronger links to weight loss. I have another video that dives into that topic. Overall though, the product itself doesn't stand out. Many other generic probiotic supplements offer similar support for gut health, and Bioma strains aren't particularly unique or specifically targeted for digestive issues. Another notable drawback with Bioma is the way it measures its probiotics. Unlike most other probiotics, which list their content in colony forming units or CFUs to show the number of live organisms, Bioma lists its probiotics in milligrams, which only gives the weight, not the count, of live active cells. This can be misleading, as the weight alone doesn't tell us much. Listing probiotics by milligrams could potentially mask a low CFU count, meaning that while there may be a large total weight, it could include mostly inactive or dead cells. So do probiotics in general help you lose weight? The evidence suggests that any weight loss effects are minimal. Certain strains of probiotics may help with weight maintenance, potentially speed up weight loss slightly, or improve health issues related to obesity like high cholesterol or inflammation. These benefits could be helpful if you're already following a comprehensive weight loss plan, but they're not going to cause weight loss by themselves. Bioma costs around $50 to $60 per month, quite expensive for a generic multi-strain probiotic. If you want a better research probiotic specifically for weight loss, I'd recommend a probiotic with Lactobacillus gasseri, which costs around $6 to $8 a month. If you want a probiotic for constipation or IBS, I recommend Align or Culturel, which costs around $15 to $20 per month. You can find generic multi-strain probiotics for much cheaper than Bioma. When it comes to improving digestive issues, I would rate Bioma a C. There is some decent evidence it may help with conditions like IBS and constipation. However, if we're looking at Bioma's effectiveness for weight loss, I'd give it a D. It's unlikely to lead to significant weight loss, and the generic strains it contains don't have strong evidence to support even minimal weight management benefits. Rated by cost, I'm giving it a D. There's nothing special about this generic probiotic, yet it's much more expensive than the others. Rating for safety, I'm giving it a B. The strains used are unlikely to be of much cause for concern. Overall rating, I'm giving a D. I would not recommend it at all. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date and share this video with someone you know who can use the info.